Hello and welcome back. Uh, we have been uh, recently discussing about enzyme reactors and we have already discussed about uh, batch operation mode and continuous operation mode. We have seen that batch operation mode is uh, in, in it we had a one time input and then uh, ultimately after the reaction ends we have the final output in the batch mode and in continuous operation we continuously have input and output active streams so that we have continuous input of uh, the feed and continuous output of our product stream. Now uh, one more uh, ideal case we will be discussing is about the plug flow operation mode and this is uh, another operation mode which in which uh, continuous operation is being followed. So in plug flow mode a plug of liquid or the plug of the reacting uh, medium or we can say uh, an element a portion of the reacting medium the fluid enters a column uh, since we operate the plug flow mode uh, in a column or a tube so it is also called as plug flow tubular reactor or a plug flow columnar reactor so in plug flow mode, a plug of liquid, an element uh, of liquid enters this column, enters the column and it continuously moves forward. There is no, in ideal case, there is assumed to be no back mixing or any axial or horizontal, uh, vertical or horizontal mixing of the fluid. Uh, the complete block of liquid, the complete object, the complete element of liquid, the complete plug of liquid continuously moves forward. And as it moves forward, if uh, there is a reactive system in it, uh, that is the catalyst are uh, spread across the column uniformly across the column, then the substrate would get converted into the products as we gradually move from input to output stream. So uh, in this case, we will have a high amount of uh, substrate concentration uh, in the input side of the column and at the output side, we will have uh, a very low amount of uh, substrate. So designing a plug flow reactor, for designing a plug flow reactor, uh, <coughs> the primary design criteria which would affect the contact between the enzyme and the substrate, the, uh, the amount, the time, uh, the time is spent by the substrate with the enzyme, the main factor that would be responsible for this would be the length of the column and the flow rate. So um, to to design such uh, plug flow reactors, let us now consider uh, mass balances for substrate at steady state across a column, uh, across a small section of the column. And uh, we are assuming a small section because later on we will assume that this section is of very minimal size that is about zero and then we would integrate it across the uh, whole column to uh, see what what is actually happening or um, what uh, uh, how does length and uh, the uh, flow rate, the, the superficial velocity depends uh, or how can you model it? How, how can you design a plug flow reactor using the length and the superficial velocity to uh, achieve a desired substrate conversion? So we assume a small section. Initially, we assume a small section and we now consider mass balances or for substrate across this small section of size delta Z. So the amount of substrate entering this small section at the point Z the from the from the input side okay from the input side this section is at a length Z from the input side so a uh, substrate entering at this position we mark it as substrate concentration at point Z this is a uh, vertical line uh, is uh, depicting the position so a substrate concentration at delta Z and this is entering into this section and substrate leaving is S Z plus delta Z. Z is this point and delta Z is the thickness of this section. So substrate leaving would be substrate concentration at Z plus delta Z. Flow rate will be uniform throughout. Uh, we also assume that the enzyme concentration is uniform throughout the reactor. There is no uh, any sort of fluctuation in the enzyme concentration either um, horizontally or vertically, um, uh, vertically or horizontally. So and we have a uniform flow rate. We also assume that we have a uniform flow rate. Although this type of uh, plug flow reactor is ideal for packed bed reactors uh, or immobilized reactors, but uh, we will start with uh, assuming that uh, it is operated uh, 
by free enzymes so that it is a little easier to uh, analyze this reactor because uh, adding immobilization would complicate the situation so now let us assume uh, for the case of free enzymes so this is volumetric flow rate f and this is substrate concentration so this gives us mass of substrate entering at z minus mass of substrate leaving at z plus delta z and this is the rate of reaction that uh, depends upon the enzyme we are using whatever enzymatic reaction we are using so this th these are the enzyme kinetic constants vmax and km so, v, uh, so michael is uh, by michael's maintain kinetics vmax s upon km plus s will be the rate of consumption now this rate of consumption because these are sub uh, concentration terms so this uh, rate of uh, reaction is volumetric so uh, by multiplying it by uh, volume we get the mass consumption rate <clears throat> so now uh, so since uh, this is a steady state so there will be no accumulation we assume that there is no accumulation of um, the substrate in the plug flow reactor so it is zero now we divide this equation one by a into delta z a into delta a is the cross sectional area and again we assume that the whole tube is of uniform cross sectional area so multiplying the cross section area with uh, with the thickness of this um, element delta z we get the volume at this position of the reactor hence uh, so multiplying the whole term by the volume of the react, uh, volume of the section we get this equation uh, and we have rearranged we have taken this min negative term of the rate of consumption to the other side of the equation and here it becomes a positive term now since this is rate of consumption so uh, to ease our derivation out because ultimately we can uh, solve the derivation in this way also but we will multiply this equation by minus 1 and also uh, if you observe caref carefully this is volumetric flow rate and this is area of cross section which is uniform throughout the throughout the reactor and flow rate is also uniform throughout the reactor so f upon a this is volume per hour and this is area so when a volume term is divided by area we get a linear term so this would become f by a would would uh, eventually become if you observe carefully observe it will become the superficial velocity of the fluid moving inside the reactor and again uh, since both of them uh, we are assuming it to be constant this superficial this superficial velocity will also be constant so multiplying this equation by minus 1 and applying this concept of superficial velocity we get u f upon a becomes u and this term when we multiply by minus 1 this term gets reversed so we have sz plus delta z in the positive term and minus sz in the negative term because this whole equation has been multiplied by minus 1 and we get the minus sign here which denotes the rate of consumption of substrate now equation 2 is valid for any small this equation is this equation number 2 is valid for any small section of the reactor mass balances across any small section of the reactor at any place so, but to analyze the whole reactor uh, as i said earlier we need to assume that this section is very very small almost uh, equal to zero uh, thickness and then we will integrate this across the reactor to uh, study the to model the equation for the whole reactor so So assuming that delta z tends to 0, this equation can be rewritten as u is a constant term, it comes out and limit delta z tends to 0 and we rewrite the whole equation, whole equation, this becomes equation 3. Now if this equation, this term, when we apply limit delta z tends to 0 can also be written as, uh, in the form of differential by the definition of uh, differentiation. We can write it down this term as change in substrate concentration ds upon change in change in the thickness okay of the reactor dz so rate of change of uh, substrate concentration with respect to change in length of the reactor z is actually the uh, delta z is the thickness of this element this section and if we assume this section to be a reactor then ds is the will be the length of this reactor and as we integrate it, uh, it across the length this uh, z is will be the terminology for 
the length of the reactor so this is small length of the reactor now uh, rearranging it for integration equation 4 for integration we have minus uh, u now uh, we will bring all the substrate terms together and since there is no length term so we will take the length term separate so we have minus u this km plus s uh, comes into the numerator on this side of the equation because the this term will get reciprocated when it comes to this side and with the negative sign so this becomes reciprocated term and uh, we get equation 5 so now we will integrate this equation 5 using limits from z equals to 0 to z is equal to complete length of the reactor l suppose l is the complete length of the reactor and substr uh, substrate entering is entering the reactor is s input si and the final substrate consideration leaving the reactor is sf so we will integrate this now now we have this minus sign here now to get um, away with this minus sign uh, we can either keep it and uh, later on remove it or we can uh, remove it by swapping the, li the limits of this integration this uh, lower limit limit will become the upper limit and upper limit will become the lower limit and this minus sign can be removed so what do we have now is now if we remove the minus sign we will have now the signs would be reciprocated it would become SF and SI would go to the as the upper limit. Now uh, to integrate this term, now to integrate this term, we must break it down into two terms. So KM upon V max S and S upon V max S would become the two terms. So if you write it down, we will write it down now separately to skip few steps. We will write it down separately so this becomes the first term would be km upon v max km upon v max 1 upon s ds km upon v max 1 upon s ds plus plus now again integration from sf to si now this side it would be s would get cancelled out and we will finally get 1 upon 1 upon v max 1 upon v max ds okay this is what we will get and on the other side we can complete the we can complete the integration and uh, we will get uh, since it is integrated in terms of l we will get here just simply l Now we can close the brackets here since I have right brackets. Now integra integration as we have done earlier in the case of batch reactor. Again the derivation of 1 upon s becomes natural logarithm of s. Km, of, Km upon Vmax are kinetic constants and they are assumed to be constant. So they will move out of this integration and we will have uh, our equation as Km upon Vmax. Now we will have natural logarithm of s as the solution for 1 upon s and applying the limits we have upper limit as si minus natural log of log sf. Now uh, na minus natural log of sf can be written as si upon natural log si upon sf. Either I can write log si natural logarithm si minus ln natural logarithm sf or I can write it in this way. So I am skipping one step and writing it in this form plus 
now this side one upon v max is a constant and it comes out of this integration and we uh, have nothing here so integration of one which is assumed to be inside would be uh, would come out to be s or s to the power zero one is s to the power zero so it would become s initial upper limit minus s final the lower limit and this would be equal to l so this will be our equation number uh, i think 6 yes equation number 6 this we, this will be our equation number 6 now this is the this equation is for the length of the reactor it has a relationship between length of the reactor and the linear uh, superficial velocity of the flowing fluid now uh, there is one more important uh, factor that is the holding time or the residence time of the substrate within this reactor now if we want to calculate the residence time we know that for residence time for residence time tau will be equal to now in the uh, continuous mode of operation we have seen that uh, residence time was equal to v upon f and so will be the case here also the v where v is the volume of the complete plug flow reactor v is the volume of the reactor and f is the volumetric flow rate so uh, we can see that Uh, unit of this is volume and this is volume per time so ultimately we have the unit for this equation as time so this is the residence time of the fluid element within the uh, plug flow reactor and therefore this is also this will also be the residence time of the substrate within the uh, plug flow reactor if the conditions are ideal there that is there is no back mixing or any sort of uh, you know um, deviation from ideality so if we divide this v by f by the cross sectional area if we divide this term by the divide and multiply it by the cross sectional area now we know that f by a was f by a can be written as u and v by a would be volume divided by the cross sectional area would give us the length of the column in a cylinder l by u now we have the equation for l here if we want to write the equation for tau we get so so tau equals to l by u l is this equation divided by u so when we uh, divide u from this equation we simply get km upon v max natural log si upon sf plus si minus sf whole upon v max Came upon V max natural log SI upon SF plus SI minus SF upon V max. So this is our equation for the residence time or the holding time of the substrate. So we can calculate what time a substrate would spend in a reactor for what time it should uh, what time it should spend. for this desired concentration and using this uh, residence time we can calculate what length 
is required. We can also calculate it using this equation. This is also one of the final equations. If we know the superficial velocity. So this is also one of the final equations, design equations. So now we have seen the case for simple free enzyme packed bed reactor. Now, since I said that this uh, uh, reactor, plug flow reactors are generally operated uh, under immobilized enzyme conditions. So when we immobilize the enzyme, uh, our equation four gets converted. So for immobilized for for immobilized enzymes equation 4 can be written as we have to add the um, we have to assume this kinetic term this uh, rate of consumption term in terms of uh, the immobilized enzyme system so our equation would become U ds by dz and rate of consumption would get converted into would have a efficiency uh, factor eta t minus rate of consumption Now here, since this case is for immobilized enzymes, so Vmax is the intrinsic uh, Vmax constant and Km is the intrinsic Michaelis maintained constant. Uh, substrate concentration is the bulk substrate concentration. Now this is a very complex case because uh, effectiveness factor uh, for immobilized enzymes, whether it is external diffusion restrictions or internal diffusion restrictions. So uh, effectiveness factor depends upon is also a function of substrate concentration. So we have to terms for substrate uh, which depends upon substrate concentration so this becomes a very complex integration and it could be solved by using mathematical tools and uh, uh, thus we can obtain the exact equation model equation for immobilized enzyme reactors but even if we can we want to even if we assume the solutions obtained by these simple equations we would be near approximate values for uh, immobilized enzyme reactors so this can give us uh, probably uh, near about uh, accurate results so i mean satisfactory results can be obtained by these two equations six and let me say that this is equation number seven for residence time so this is all we need to know about plug flow reactors enzyme reactors and thank you hope you understood all the concepts in this uh, lecture and for any queries please uh, you can feel free to mail me or you can um, write it your queries in the comment section and i would be very happy to reply it back to you you can provide me with your email addresses or i may even uh, if possible i may reply it in the comment section so depending upon your question you can contact me thank you have a nice day